What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now the year was 1988 when I first learned how to scuba dive. And back then I didn't have what I've got today and the equipment that I had of course was hand-me-down equipment from my parents and I actually started out on a BCD that belonged to my mother. Now it was a female's version, it was used equipment, but I took really good care of it and it's still in use today. I actually started my oldest daughter on it and my youngest daughter's actually starting to use scuba gear now and she will be starting out with the same BC. But as reliable as that BC was, one of the things that we didn't really trust back in the late 80s and early 90s of course was dive computers and it was wasn't so much the computer that we didn't trust, it was actually the battery inside the computer that we didn't trust. And for a couple of reasons. One, that computer didn't have a battery indicator. It wouldn't actually tell us when the battery was going to go bad. And with that being said, of course, we never knew when the computer was going to shut off. Would it shut off before a dive, during a dive, or after a dive? And that was kind of a big thing back then. So computers are a lot more reliable today than what they used to be simply because the batteries are more reliable and the fact that computers also have a battery indicator. Now, as I stated at the beginning, guys, dive computers today are so much more reliable than what they used to be back in the past. And a lot of times today, we don't even have to replace the batteries in a dive computer. We simply charge the computer. A lot of computers nowadays are rechargeable. They come with a charging system. You plug it up, you let it set for about 30 minutes to an hour, and you're going to get a full charge. Now, you take the Marius Genius here, you're going to get a couple months use out of it, a normal diver's going to, before he has to actually charge it. If you're an avid diver and you're diving all the time, you might actually get a month use out of it and then you simply recharge it. Well, I use a little bit older school style computer and it still takes a battery. And if you look close enough, you will see that there's a little battery indicator there in the center and that battery indicator is showing that it's about half full. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure how much longer this battery is actually going to last because that battery indicator is there to let me know that the battery is weak enough for the indicator to come on and it's time to change the battery. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to change the battery of my specific dive computer which is the Marius Quad Air. Alright guys so changing batteries especially in a user-friendly computer like the Marius Quad Air here is very easy to do. You'll notice that the battery cap here on the back has got this little slot. A lot of people will make the mistake of actually sticking a screwdriver in there. You don't actually got to do that. All it takes is a simple quarter or a nickel or some type of coin here. Um, all I'm going to do is just stick it in there, slowly start turning it to the left and you'll feel the tension start to come off of the battery cap as you turn it to the left. Now once it's completely out there, you'll notice that the battery is now exposed. And all you gotta do is simply push up on it and it'll pop right out. Now some computers will actually have an O-ring sitting right inside the battery uh, compartment here or they'll have an O-ring that's on the battery cap itself. And you wanna inspect that O-ring. Some manufacturers will tell you to replace it. It all depends on what type of battery kit that you get for your computer. And I've got one here from Marius here and it's got a spare O-ring. So we're actually gonna re be replacing that O-ring as well. But you also wanna make sure that the battery compartment is cleaned out. There's no debris or anything like that. And I'm just using a little brass uh, pick here. You can use a little plastic pick if you want to. Or if you don't feel too comfortable doing that, just take you a little paper towel and kind of wipe it around. Make sure there's no debris or anything that could actually get in your way. Now that we've done that, of course, to replace the O-ring, it's a very simple uh, process here. I just take my little brass pick here and I'm going to pry that little O-ring off just like so. Set it aside. And I'm going to go ahead and get my new O-ring here. Now I've got my new O-ring. I'm going to go ahead and replace it on the cap as well. And as I'm doing so, I want to inspect the cap. I want to make sure that the threads are good on the cap, that there's no damage to the threads whatsoever. And depending on the manufacturer, you may need to actually uh, lubricate this O-ring here. If you do need to lubricate it, you want to make sure that you're using the appropriate lube for it. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot. Typically what I'll do is just take my little brass pick, dip it down in the lube, and just kind of rub it around really good just making sure that it's nice and uh, lubricated up just like that. 
Now that all that's done, we can go back to the computer and actually replace the battery. On this particular one, it's a very, very simple replace. We just take the battery, and I want to make sure on this particular case that the positive is pointing up, and I'm going to stick it down in the battery compartment. I'm also going to take the cap for the battery compartment, and I'm going to get it lined up, making sure that I'm very careful not to get it cross-threaded. Now, typically what I do is I'll just kind of hold it in place there. I'll go ahead and take my coin. You can hear the battery or the computer coming back on as soon as that battery got some tension put on it. I'm going to go ahead and take my coin here and I'm just going to screw that battery uh, housing cap simply back on. Like I said, you want to be very careful that you don't cross thread uh, the actual threads of the cap and you don't want to go too tight. Typically what I do is literally turn it until it stops, give it just a little bit of love, a little bit of tender care there, and we should be good to go. Now I'm going to inspect all the way around it to make sure there's no gaps, that there's no holes, that I didn't get it lopsided or cross-threaded, and if everything looks good to go, I'm going to flip the computer back around. Now on this particular one, this screen's going to pop up. I can simply just scroll through, and you'll see that the normal dive screen comes back up. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test this battery. Even though this battery was brand new, I still want to test it to make sure that it's still in good working order because sometimes these battery kits can sit there for a while. The batteries can wear down. So I'm going to go to my info screen and you'll notice that the little battery indicator is showing that it's full and that it's flashing that it's okay. That means this computer is good to go. Now, if I back simply back out to the main screen, one of the things that I also want to do is I want to check the time. Now, it's saying that it's 2.31 when in reality it's closer to five o'clock so I need to go back in here and reset my clock reset my date and all that so on this particular one I can simply scroll through and I can go to set time and I can set it up however I need to set it up so I like mine in 24 hour time you can set it up for 12 hours if you want to uh, today's date of course is the 20th so I'm going to go in and I'm going to set it up for the 20th here and once I've got it set, then of course I will set the month. We are still currently in December now, so I'm going to go ahead and set it up for the 12th there. Oops. And then of course we can set it up for the year, and it is still currently 2022 at the time of the recording of this video, of course. And now I can set the time. Now the current time here is 4.43 p.m., so I'm going to set it up for 16.30.3. And we are good to go. Now I can go in here and change the settings as a dive just to make sure nothing got changed on my computer here. So let's just run through it real quick and just make sure everything's good with it. A lot is at 10, it's good. P factor at PO, that's good. Altitude, we're at normal altitude. Now I'm currently set up for fresh water. I'm actually going to change this to salt water uh, because next week I will actually be down in Cosmel. So let's go in and change that to salt water. There we go. All right, so that's set. And of course, gas integration, I'm gonna leave off. I don't use the gas integration uh, feature on here. I'm not gonna be pairing it, but if I do need to pair, I can very simply go in there and pair it. I'll leave that turned off. Uh, tank volume, I'm gonna set up because I am gonna be diving down there in Cosmel and we're gonna have 80, so that's good to go. Nothing wrong there. And then of course, I can go into the pressure of the tank if I wanna change for turn time and all that. Okay. Keep on scrolling. Units is good. We're going to set it up for the Imperial system. Leave it set. Fast alarm on. Deep alarm on. All alarms turned on. Current temperature. That's just for my hands touching it here. Yep. All that looks good. Runaway deco we're going to leave off. We're just doing recreational diving. And of course the race codes where I can go in and change features. And that's it guys. That's how easy it is to actually replace the battery. Especially in this Mares Quad Air dive computer. So there you go guys, that's how easy it is to change a battery for yourself, especially if you got say the Mares Quad Air like I do, or in the case of say a Genius from Mares, it's simply a rechargeable battery. You simply plug in your recharger and off you go. Um, once again, you might want to check your specific manufacturer, check the owner's manual of the computer system that you've got and see how often they tell you to change it. Mares basically says when that little battery indicator comes on that it's of course time to change your battery and of course make sure that you're using the proper battery and that you have the o-ring to go with it so I would suggest going by your local training center getting a battery kit from them wherever it is you purchased your computer so that you're using the right kit 
Once again, if you don't feel safe doing it yourself, then of course have a certified trained technician do it. But if you feel comfortable doing it in the field, it's a very simple, very easy process. That's it, guys. If you've got any questions on how to change your battery, drop me a comment down below, and I'll try to help you out the best I can. If you like the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. I'm going to go ahead and sign off today. I've got to get packed up and head down to Cosmel. So, guys, take care. God bless, and I will see you in the next video.